Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Council and Committee meeting, uh, Tuesday, March 7th. Dean, call the order, please. A mover and a seconder, please. Jennifer and Betty. Moved by Councillor Goche, second by Councillor King, that the Council and Committee meeting on March 7th, 2023, be called to order at 5.30 p.m. All in favor? Carried. Roll call, please. Mayor Bennett. Present. Reeve Watt. Councillor Keel. Present. Councillor Hewitt. Present. Councillor Ugly. Present. Councillor King. Present. Councillor Wren. Present. All members present except for Reeve Watt. Okay. Move to the agenda. Wendy and Brian. Moved by Councillor Hewitt, second by Councillor Ugly, that the agenda of the Council and Committee meeting of March 7, 2023 be approved as presented. All in favor? Carried. Disclosure pecuniary interest. Uh, yes, we received one from Councillor Wren. So it says, um, I, uh, uh, Councillor Wren, member of the Township of Laurentian Valley Council, who can declare pecuniary interest in the following items on the agenda of the Council and Committee meeting on March 7, 2023. And they would be um, 6AB, uh, Zoning Bylaw 2023-02 Studem, uh, Severance Application, or sorry, Zoning Bylaw Application of Z2023-02, uh, for consent files B6021, and also uh, 6AC, which is zoning by application Z202301, splinter, and consent application B5921. Do we vote on that? No. no. Okay. I don't think so. It just becomes part of the map. Yeah. yeah. No delegations. Planning and emergency public meeting under the Planning Act motion to open the public meeting. Jennifer and Brian. Move by Councillor Gochi, second by Councillor um, uh, Ugly, that the Council and Commi Council of Township Laurentia Valley, pursuant to Section 34 of the Planning Act, hereby declare public meeting open at 5:35 p.m to discuss zoning bylaw amendment file number Z 2023-01, splinter B59-21, and zoning bylaw amendment file number Z 2023-02, Studham B60-21. All in favor. Kurt. So as noted, Council Rand has yeah. Left the chambers. Correct. Laurie, please. Okay, we um, have uh, two applications for zoning bylaw amendment uh, before council tonight uh, for public meeting. And uh, these are separate applications, but they are related files that are also related to two um, applications for consent for lot additions. Um, so the first uh, is actually Z202302. And notice for both were, were given in the same manner. So I'm going to give uh, the general rules and preamble as part of this application, and it won't be repeated again uh, for the second part, but uh, it was that notice was given in accordance with section 34, 10.7 of the Planning Act, again, as a joint notice of public meeting and as well as a joint notice of um, application received. And it was deemed to be a complete application and meeting the requirements of the Planning Act. And the public meeting again is here tonight um, being held and it's in accordance with section 34 of the planning act. The purpose and effect of this uh, amendment is to satisfy a condition of consent for county of Renfrew consent application file number B6021 by rezoning the proposed lot additional lands so they'll be in the same zone as the lands being added to. The lands being severed as a lot addition are coming from a parcel known municipally as 42 Carroll Street and are being added to a 3267 Beeline Road. Uh, the effect of the amendment is to rezone the subject lands from rural residential to rural exception 60, and the lands affected by this amendment are located on parts three and four on plan 49R 17745 in part lot 179 on RCP 422 within part lot 30 concession 14 in the geographic township of Alice. So copies of information and the draft bylaws are all available at the township office for inspection um, and questions can be directed to the township planner or the planning and recreation coordinator. So again, this is the opportunity uh, for any persons um, if they wish to make either written or verbal 
comments to council prior to a decision being made that that's what they need to do in order to preserve um, the ability for appeal on the zoning bylaw amendment. Um, and again, by providing comments or putting uh, written comments in, you're also consenting to that being part of the public record and including your name and information to be released related to the, the comments uh, to anybody deemed appropriate that asks. And again, this notice was issued uh, on the 14th day of February and the site was posted uh, at the same time as well in accordance with the Planning Act. So there were no uh, written comments received um, other than our typical, uh, usually Enbridge provides us with that they have no objection uh, or comment. Um, and that was the only written comment. Um, we did have, uh, just for clarification, we did have one um, member of the public also point out that there had been an error um, that actually was through the MPAC uh, information that was provided related to the lands being added to. Um, they are indeed 3267 Beeline Road, and that's how the civic address blade does reflect, but all MPAC records had reflected that as being 3265, which is, a, is already attached to another property. So that is, has been noted, and uh, it's noted in the report to council and will be re-noted when the uh, information goes out. Thanks, Laurie. Any questions, Council? Any comments from the public? Seeing none. I have a motion. Motion. Jennifer and Brian. You say, perhaps you Moved by Councillor Goche, second by Councillor Ugly. That the Council Committee approves the application for zoning bylaw amendment file Z202302, Studham and Forge bylaw number. 2023-03-014 as presented to the bylaw portion of the regular council meeting of March 21st, 2023 for enactment by council. All in favor? Carry. So the second part, Laurie? Sorry, Splinter? Uh, yes, so the second application that's before us tonight is uh, Z-2023-01. Again, notice was issued on the same date and time and as a combined notice of application and public meeting, uh, similarly to the previous application. And this purpose of this file was to satisfy, again, a condition for consent, but it was for County of Renfrew consent application file number B5921. And it's to rezone the lot addition land so that they'll be in the same zone as the lands being added to. So in this case, the lands being severed as a law additioner are coming from the parcel known municipally as 3267 Beeline Road and are being added to 42 Carroll Street. So the effect of the amendment is to rezone the subject lands from rural exception 60 to rural residential. So the lands affected by this amendment are described as part one on plan 49R 20265 and within part lots 53, 54, and 179 on RCP 422 within part lot 13, concession 14 in the geographic township of Alice. And again, similarly, um, this is the, also the opportunity for members of the public, uh, if they have any verbal comments or if they wish to leave comments in writing with council prior to a decision being made, um, that they need to do so to protect their appeal rights. Thanks, Laurie. Question to council? Everybody from the public. Moving a seconder. Jennifer and Betty. Moved by Councillor Gauthier, second by Councillor King, that the Council and Committee approves application for zoning bylaw amendment file Z202301, Splinter and Forwards bylaw number 2023-03013, as presented to the bylaw portion of the regular council meeting of March 21st, 2023, for enactment by Council. All in favor? Carried. The third report. No, that's it. Motion to, Motion to adjourn the public planning. Wendy and Brian. Moved by Councillor Hewitt, second by Councillor Ugly, that the Council of Township Laurentian Valley hereby declare a public meeting March 7th be adjourned at uh, 540 p.m. Okay, so on a business. Uh, we, have we have to vote on that. All in favor, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, under business report update of planning tariff of fees bylaw, Lori. Uh, yes, yeah, so I do anticipate bringing a fuller review of the planning tariff of fees bylaw back to council shortly uh, related to our new um, protocols that are being put in place with uh, pre consultation. Um, however, it did come to our attention that um, the county Renfrew had brought in a fee 
um, that's being applied to lower tier municipalities when we submit an application that's been approved by council for an amendment to a lower tier official plan. And so we, we this came to our attention when we sent the council, sorry, the township initiated a one related to the complete applications uh, so that we do anticipate that there we will have some other uh, pending applications for official plan amendment and so that the township isn't um, stuck absorbing that uh, $500 fee. We're also going to have that, that it's applied to the applicants as well, um, that they are responsible for that fee when it's initiated by um, a, a private person. Questions, comments? No, nope. you got a motion? I do. Jennifer Bryan. Move by Councillor Goche, second by Councillor Ugly, that the Council and Committee approves a proposed amendment to the Planning Act of Tariff and Fees Bylaw 2020-12056 as forwards bylaw number 2023-03018 as it presented to the bylaw portion of the regular council meeting for passing. All in favor. Carried. Update emergency management appointment bylaw. Okay, so this is really a housekeeping um, matter. Um, it did come to our attention that uh, accidentally uh, when we appointed uh, Nevada Sergeant as our um, inf emergency information officer after our uh, former staff member Kayla Janke had uh, left the township, that uh, by error we referenced an amendment to uh, the bylaw that we had previously appealed. So we're cleaning that up with this housekeeping amendment because at the same time, we do also need to address that we have had some title changes with relation to our um, new uh, operations supervisor as opposed to operations foreman. Um, with our incoming new uh, treasurer, uh, we aren't required to um, amend that because it's only the CEMC, alternate CEMC and EIO that we actually name them specifically. Otherwise, it's just their job positions. So this is just an update to clean up that bylaw. Motion. Wendy and Al. Moved by Councilor Hewitt, second by Councilor Wren, that Council and Committee approves the proposed amendments to the Emergency Management Appointments Bylaw 217-12055 and forwards Bylaw 2023-03016 as presented to the bylaw portion of the March 21st, 2023 regular council meeting for enactment. All in favor. Carried. Bill Coates, Municipal Drain. Clause, please. Thanks, Lart. So we're just bringing up bylaw to discuss. We'll pass it at, sorry. You'll pass it at the next meeting. <clears throat> we did repairs to the Buchholz Municipal Drain, basically on the Zato Mites branch, which is mostly Hawkins now. <clears throat> and the costs are split up in the schedule according to the original bylaw. If anybody had any questions? No. Nope. <laughs> we, uh, well, it was only four and a half hours in the back, so we did it ourselves. Yeah, that's good. Motion. Move and seconder, please. Betty and Al. Moved by Councillor King, second by Councillor Wren, that the Council Committee approves Blue Coast Management Drain Maintenance Bylaw 2022 as presented forwards bylaw. Uh, bylaw number 2023-03015 to the bylaw portion of regular council meeting on March 21st, 2023 for enactment of council. All in favor, carry it. And clause uh, tracks and municipal drain. <clears throat> so this drain's been in front of council for a few times. We finally got the work done in September. <coughs> the final bills are in and they're substantially less than was estimated by the er engineer originally. So under Section 62.1 of the uh, Municipal Drain Act that needs to come back to Council and be approved. The uh, <clears throat> original split is still as was set up. It's just, it's all prorated down in the same proportions to the different people paying into it. And so this is a revision of the bylaw that was passed last spring. Okay, any questions? Motion. Motion. Brian and Jennifer. Moved by Councillor Ugly, second by Councillor Goche, that the Council and Committee approves 
Bylaw to amend the Tracks and Municipal Drain Bylaw 2022-04018 in accordance with Section 62-1 of the Drainage Act to reflect the actual construction costs and forwards bylaw number 2023-03017 as presented to the bylaw portion of March 21st, 2023 regular council meeting for passing. All in favor. Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Klaus. Under subcommittees, Pembroke Canary Airport. Alan? Just an update, I think it's just an update, a, a couple of meetings back, uh, Charlene uh, reported on the uh, our portion of the uh, uh, payment to the Pembroke Area Airport Commission, and she uh, noted that it uh, wasn't exact because we hadn't got all of the total assessments from all the municipalities, so Deep River was actually the holdout, and uh, we finally got that uh, number just this past week. So. Uh, uh, in 2022, Laurentian Valley's portion was 18.969%, uh, and we contributed uh, $18,633.99. <clears throat> so if we increase that by 5%, the increase would be 931.70. So in 2023, what we sh we would be paying if it was a straight 5% increase would be 19,565.69. But because of the difference in the uh, uh, total assessment, our percentage has gone down to 18.873. So we have a savings of $99.62. So our portion this year is 19,466.07. Thank you, Alan. Any questions for Alan? Seeing none, uh, emergency management program, Lori, nothing to report. Corporate services, uh, festival hall committee, Dean. Okay, um, I did reach out to the city in Petawawa um, with regards to this item. I know it's been on the table in the last couple of meetings, just to try to get some more explanation, I guess. Um, uh, Council is correct in the, uh, in the ask that they are doing, um, they're asking to reopen the agreement because it's, it's on a sliding scale and it's going in a negative direction it, um, and there's a feel by the consortium that it's not really it's not achieving what it was meant to achieve uh, you know i know um, some members had a, a concern that we had signed the agreement and um, and it is what it is but in this case i mean it, it, it's been decreasing at substantial rates so if we look at table one of the city's letter um in uh, 2020 uh, his that the venture uh, com uh, venture entertainment group was seeing a decrease in its premiums from forty four thousand to forty one thousand, and then again in twenty twenty one stayed at forty one thousand, and twenty two stayed at forty one thousand, twenty three although be it it raised up, it still still didn't pass the two thousand nineteen amount and when it was signed. So uh, Petawawa and uh, the city have moved forward, and they've agreed in principle to bring to reopen the agreement and to uh, get it reworded to councils. Uh, um, we're still left on the table. Uh, there is some discrepancy in how that is being, even if we were to say no, I think we're a group, but uh, there's some discrepancy in exactly how that works and that, that has to be kind of, we're trying to, if, if need be, we may need to get a legal opinion on whether two to one or if it has to be a majority. It's, not, it's a little bit unclear, it's a little silent in the actual consortium agreement. But however, having said that, our portion being requested right now is fifteen hundred dollars extra in twenty twenty three, which I believe we budgeted for at this point, but council still has to agree to it. And um, the other item, I did talk to the chair of the consortium. Um, he was willing to bring the, the actual. We, we talked about cola here and the concern with cola, the way it's going in the last year being significant, in the last two years I guess being significant. Um, maybe trying to at least lock that down either with a cap or an actual amount that it that doesn't exceed that. The contract itself will be um, expiring in 2025. So we do have three years left, I guess, um, to do it. Uh, so that's the information I got. Um, there's still a motion on the table is that we agree in principle with the changes and the actual agreement will be brought back at a later date. So questions, comments? Brian? Uh, I guess I just have a problem with it being retroactive back to uh, to the beginning. If you, first of all, it was the consortium's or choice to extend the contract beyond the two years to five years, uh, 
and now trying to make it retroactive back to day one. So if you want to change it from um, population based to um, cost of living, then go at today's date, but don't do everything retroactive back because that's a completely different contract. So I did bring that forward, and I guess it, it's not a true retroactive. It's a little different because um, right now um, we're we're starting as I mentioned. If you look at Table One in the red, um, it shows that there was some losses in revenue of roughly in the neighborhood. I'm going to just calculate them offhand because the numbers here six, uh, five, seven, eight, about. 10,000 and we're only going back. We're only going to collect the group is going to end up paying in 23, 6,000 of that back, which our share again, our, we got the smallest share at $1,505. So that's all we're picking up for those losses. Um, and then, like I said, from 2023, we'll use 2000. Uh, then we'll just put the cola on top of it. So it's not a true pickup, but there is, I guess, and I don't know the reason for that. I couldn't get the actual explanation. I didn't really get that. And I apologize for asking that, but I was looking at that late in the day and I noticed that we're not picking up all the losses. We're only uh, picking up 6,000 of the, I would say probably, you know, in the neighborhood of 10. Not us personally too, that's the group. But but I, I point well taken. I mean, we, we know that we've reopened it and the intent was a certain way it didn't quite go the intent but it still was an agreement i know we understand jennifer just because i was on the committee this was supposed to be dealt with in the summer um it was put off put off put off <clears throat> supposed to be done before elections that did not happen here we are okay Al? but i i have no problem going forward as long as we make the consortium known that this is not really the right like brian said it's really not the right way to to go about it, uh, handling a contract and my concern is as are we setting a precedent for some other contracts that we may have in the future you know you do it once and 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 uh, you know people come back after you and say well you did it for these people why don't you do it for me so, so to be honest with you, I, I don't think it's the right way to handle a contract. I believe it's it's something that the uh, municipality needs to be involved with, and I believe that the consortium is is doing a fantastic job running the facility and the whole bit. Uh, it, it, it's not the money; I think it's it's more the principle of things. Brian, yeah, certainly strong supporter of Festival Hall. I was there all morning today. Um, like Rick and his group and everything else, I just on on principle, the reason you you sign a contract is to have something in writing to go forward with. If it was myself, I'd give them the fifteen hundred bucks. But our job here is the taxpayers' uh, money, and that's what we're dealing with, not not our own. And that contract's a contract. Okay, I have a motion. You need a move in a second, please, uh, Jennifer. And Wendy. So moved by Councillor Gochi, second by Councillor Hewitt, that the Council of the Township Laurentian Valley accept the proposed changes in principle and request that festival agreement with Adventure Entertainment be provided for review. All in favor. Carried. But Dean, we will make them aware yeah. that, that you know this isn't the yeah. way contracts should be dealt with. I think they're well aware of that. Yeah, we've kind of expressed. I think they're aware of that yeah. as yeah. well. And I think also yeah. we'll have to look at the call as well. Yeah. Okay, uh, proposed amendments with council procedure bylaw, Dean. Okay, um, I guess we've had some requests and um, we're starting to see more of it. And I guess this kind of <laughs> becomes the way of the future, I guess, or at least we have to deal with it one way or another. So obviously we're equipped to now do virtual type meetings from different reasons and other municipalities are doing all kinds of different things. Um, but the majority are doing something to allow members with the way the society is now with the electronic age to attend even the province has put legislation in there to to allow members to to uh, participate in meetings electronically or virtually so we've um, kind of combined some of our wording some other wording as well with the county's uh, recent um, changes and we're suggesting um, the following kind of, uh, and it's certainly this is a draft. This is not what, if somebody needs a change or is not want liking, basically it is an opened type um, agreement. 
or a procedural bylaw that will allow members to decide on their own um, to uh, basically um, attend virtually if they so feel. Um, so maybe, I, and I can certainly ask uh, Lori too, if she's done a lot of work with this. So if she wants to comment at all, I'd certainly step up Lori, but uh, I just, it, it, what is member, it's the thoughts of the council members, is there? Oh, so if, if, if I'm reading it in 8.0, 8 we need the uh, approval of the mayor. Well, we're going to cross that out. We're crossing that out. So, 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 so the best thing to do, the proposed changes are at the back, at the back, at the end, and 8.0 is refreshed. That's basically where we're adding, you know, we've crossed out the mayor, obviously, with the approval of the mayor, and then we've added some in the black writing is the, um, so maybe I don't know, sure. Um, so, so my concern would be that we're, we're, we're taking that approval process out and and I have a problem if it's going to be carte blanche that somebody could uh, spend four years sitting at home and zooming in uh, to meetings. Uh, I don't think that's what uh, my feeling. I don't think that's what we were elected to do. We were elected to be uh, upfront and present for our, our ratepayers and, and manage the municipality. I, I don't feel that uh, by not uh, attending meetings, I, I don't think we're getting uh, the full bang for a buck. And I'd have a concern that there's not some type of approval, approval process. I agree that there needs to be some uh, uh, ability to, to zoom into meetings or electronically attend meetings on uh, occasions when, you know, somebody is out of the country or, or away and they, they can still take the time to participate in the meeting. but for it to be just wide open, I, I have a real concern with that. Wendy. Um, I also would echo Councillor Wren's comments because I, uh, I've been a part of different organizations when they have this bylaw, then some do just choose not to come. So I do think it needs to have some kind of a vetting process like through yourself or someone. I, I don't think it should be open-ended. Okay. Okay, a um, couple of things um, when just talking to other uh, other colleagues. Um, I know there is a municipality uh, that some have put in, you know, you're allowed two to three a year or something to that comment. One has also put in that you must be in the chambers once every 60 days. Another reason, that at least you get the, and, and you know, we thought about that and, you know, the, the process is, I mean, we've had the luxury and the 11 years that I've been here, council members are dedicated, they attend the chambers, you know, don't forget this is in place, but if it becomes abused, then it can be brought back to the table and dealt with. I mean, it's not a, you know, I like, I like to think that this group is pretty dedicated and I don't think, you know, people may use it, but it'll be on one off. So it's not going to be see you back in four years time. Although some people have the belief that if that's the way a person wants to represent their town or the, the constituents, then let the constituents decide in four years time whether that's good or bad. But I mean, that's another angle too, right? So I, we didn't put it in there, certainly can. I'm not suggesting any, you know, can put all kinds of different ways to do this. At this point, we're just trying to use the, the, you know, the technology right now we call it, it's basically, you know, without the approval of the mayor, or no, we took that out and we added, you know, the township in a declared emergency, obviously you can attend, significant weather event declared, uh, members ill or other related, they can you know, attend virtually in a scheduling conflict that would not allow a member to attend the meeting location. So I guess people could use that, say I got a you know, conflict, I got to get my nails done or get my hair done or something. Yes, but I don't think that's going to happen in this group, right? So that's kind of the idea here is, you know, but we can put the 60 day, I mean, I thought that was pretty neat. <laughs> we can put that 60 day um, item um in there and the question is going to be then if we put 60 days then um is that committee meeting or or any meeting in the chamber i don't know we just have to define that if we're going to put one of them conflicts in there go ahead Al. so so rather than, than than changing it and and just allowing it to be wide open and if there's an issue we we go back and revisit again why not take care of it right now and then if down the road we decide that as a next year or, or in the third year of our term, we decide, you know what, it's not being a, abused, then we can revisit it at that point and make it more open. But at, I think at this point, I think rather than 
it becoming the norm, then it becomes too hard to go back to what it used to be, is my concern. I personally, I, I think it's it's important that we have this. We've come a long way, and it allows people when they're away to participate. And I encourage that because you're staying in touch with, with the council group. Um, I would suggest four meetings. Anything after four meetings uh, be approved by by the mayor per year. Could we add? And you must be in council chambers at least once every sixty days. No, that would be four meetings anyways. But yeah, you can add that. Because we've got to remember the act states basically right now, you, you must attend a meeting within three months. So like a person could excuse himself for three months, but you must be, if you don't attend within three months, then your seat is vacated. So there's that act, that, that ax is there too. So, I mean, you know, I mean, although this time we're suggesting electronically, which would count, but um, the act does state it goes into three months. It uses a three month threshold. But if we if we allow electronic meeting, then that kind of throws yeah, that yeah, out the window. Yeah, as yeah. long as somebody uh, appears at one meeting, yeah. then then it, the clock starts all over again. Correct. Correct. So it's council wishes, Brian. I, I guess my question is four meetings. Yeah. I guess it's whether there's health concerns or not. If somebody's in the hospital, that's a different. Right, and then kettle, that would kettle be fish all together, yeah. and so I would say less um, without hospital, but then give leeway for extended health challenges, sir. But anything more than 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 four, we could put the clause in. Must be approved by the mayor. Yeah, that's sort of what I was thinking. I guess I mean just again. So then, is that you know where does that fall now? Are we talking? There is just just we're talking committee meetings now, committee of the whole and council. If we have a special meeting of council, does that count? Because that's how it's to be defined and it gets a little convoluted and we're going to have to start counting meetings. You missed this one and I didn't miss this one or you left halfway or, you know, all that kind of stuff. It, it just gets it's a bit convoluted administratively, but as long as council's comfortable, because we do have other meetings that we do meet like, you know, sometimes we might have some kind of delegation meeting where it's not really a meeting but it's an educational session for council and a person can't come but uses electronic does that count you know so those kind of things need to be yeah. i would say any meeting of council be it a, a special meeting be it a committee of council be it a council meeting any meeting of council that that would be deemed a, a meeting that you that you would normally be present at including budget meetings whatever yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Four meetings and then approval by the mayor after that of any council meeting. Okay. Got a motion? Well, no, I love, no. we're just, just going to bring it back. Yeah, okay. approval report. Well, I do have a motion. Sorry. I just, um, no, I think we'll just bring it back. We'll okay. Get direction. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm uh, got everything else. Is everybody else okay with the rest of the wording? Obviously, you know, in a closed session, um, you know, you have to declare that you're in, you know, you're, um, you know, Secluded room, obviously, no, you know, and if you get uh, internet connection is secure and might not be publicly accessible, it is strongly recommended councils wear earbuds and headphones when in the closed session so nobody else is hearing you um, or shouldn't be in the room, really, to be honest. Um, all those other things, just please, if you have any concerns. The other thing is delegations to committees and shall be permitted via electronic means. So we're letting the delegations come in anytime because, you know, sometimes we're dealing with Toronto and just avoid travel. If if the, if it's more feasible to do it virtually, that'll be in there to allow them to do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we'll bring this forward. If anybody else has any concerns over the next couple of weeks, we'll bring this forward to the March twenty first meeting with the idea that four meetings, and we'll try and define exactly how we're going to do that. Okay. Okay. Fire chief, how's it going, Tim? Not bad, you. Good. Yeah, I have to come in. We need you to talk into the mic. Well, could we give him the mic? We could have given him. So, I figured that this is a chair now. I should say, fire chief here now. I should say, there. <laughs> well, we can get you a mic. Okay. Next time we'll do that. Shut up. Just take this. My last one. Okay, we okay. have our fire reports in front of us. Uh, first of all, any questions for our fire chief? Take 
it off that easy. <laughs> so what's new with the fire department? Tim, um, I see you're doing some training and yeah, I just um, we got a thousand and fifty one dollars from the uh, uh, the Ontario government for books and things for training. So I we I just ordered that in the last two or three weeks. So that should be coming in. Yeah, we're we're ramping up for lots of training. That's what where everything's headed right now. Um, so we're we're going to be in good shape. I'm not concerned. It's going to be uh, we got four years to complete what we're going to complete. So. Um, oh. How are we come along with the extraction equipment and training for that, and and how how long before we're on our own? I will be. We should be on our own approximately. I would say, like the stuff is ordered. It hasn't all arrived yet. They want to send me parts of it. I don't want parts of it. I don't want all of it because okay. Once that is, it will need six to eight months of training. So I would say we'll probably go online. I'm going to say January next year. I want us to be a hundred percent before we, you know, we want to be good at it. And, and uh, yeah, we've got some training lined up for it. So, and, and where is that training done, Tim? Mostly done right in our hall. Some okay. of it's going to be done with Petawawa because Petawawa has been doing it for so long. Right. Um, the company that sold it to us also is coming, comes to our hall to do okay. some of the training. Right. Um, we have some, uh, there's some literature on it, obviously. And then okay. there's some, uh, there's a, uh, OFM training on it, so yeah, we'll we'll be touching it all. So yeah. and so all members will be trained. On all the, members, the, I want okay. everybody trained before we get say we're taking over because Perfect. I don't want to get uh, with the way our shift system works. It would be too easy to have four guys that know and two guys that don't. So I want everybody trained. Okay. Yeah. That's great. No. Thank you. No, that's yeah. good news. Very good yeah. news. Brian, how do you access fires on the Skidoo Trail? very carefully <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hard okay usually most of the stuff on the skidoo trail somebody's always at the at one of the roads waiting for us with a four by four or whatever and i mean we can t take in a pack or whatever but there's not a whole lot we can do like if your snowmobile's on fire at the trail i mean call the insurance company because it's gone <laughs> i mean yeah but there's not a it, it's the same problem we have when there's when there's people hurt okay like um but usually there's enough people it it, there, it always seems that there's somebody shows up with a four-wheeler or or a snowmobile and and you know people are so they get us to it and, and we do what we have to do and, and get back so um that that's a good thing but no that that's not a whole lot you can do oh. unless we get the fire chief as could do <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh um the other thing is is that i'm going to go over the uh the um charges that we charge for letters for the insurance and for these uh these the, the homes when they're selling homes and businesses and because uh we haven't updated that for a couple of years and i think we should raise our price and get up with the rest of them and so we can get a little more money in but i'll get bring that to the table in the next couple of months so okay okay Thanks very much, Tim. Thank you. Tell the guys doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, okay, Fred. So, Festival Hall, anything to report? Nothing to report at this time. We haven't had a meeting, and I guess we were just uh, working on the the report Contract. that we'd heard earlier. Government Public Library, Wendy. So in your package, you would have got uh, the monthly meeting minutes from January and a full board package. Uh, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things which I thought were interesting. So um, our Laurentian Valley users in 2022, um, over 2023, we have almost 400 more Laurentian Valley people that are using our library, which I thought was a, a pretty strong um, stat. And uh, in 2022, our Laurentian Valley people uh, didn't use the public access to the computers at all. Um, and this past year, we have 31. So I thought that was quite a difference. Um, and then on the website, I'm sure if you folks look at the library at all, you'll see there's a whole pile of activities for March break planned, um, which is fantastic. And they have a calendar monthly and there's something going on at the library almost every day. So I thought that was amazing. Um, 
I think that's the big thing. And then there was a few concerns uh, that were brought forth at our last meeting um, with some of our people from the grind that are using the library. So those issues are being addressed. Um, and maybe in the future, they might have to actually get some hired people to help because uh, there's some issues in the washrooms and different things like that. So those are being addressed. And uh, they had problems with their snow uh, at the back that weren't being removed. So that's also being addressed and maybe possibly adding another uh, parking spot for um, uh, accessibility purposes. So those are the highlights from the meeting. Yeah, very good reports to look through. Thanks, Wendy. You're welcome. Any questions for Wendy, the library? Seeing none, we'll move down to Waste Recovery Center. Just a couple of things to note. There's the minutes and the summary of the minutes. Um, we've had to, because of the ministry uh, has delayed our moving to the next cell, we're getting close to running out of uh, landfill space uh, in the short term. So we uh, decided as a board to stop non-partner uh, landfill. Um, a lot of it, a lot of the non-partner landfill is brought to our center because it's convenient because of our hours. Where in other areas, their landfills are limited to the number of days of the week or number of hours. So we've had to do that to protect our own landfill for the time being. Once we move to the next cell and uh, the the Ministry of Environment approves it, then we will reopen back up again. Um, we are in the negotiation period of our uh, MRF building to lease out when the conversion takes over uh, January 1st, 2025, when we're no longer would be processing recyclables um, through uh, Blue Box Ontario. So we're looking at different possibilities of what we can do with our MRF because they still, whoever takes our contract in this area still needs the Waste Recovery Centre uh, at a minimum uh, um, as a transfer station because of the kilometers in Redford County. So those are some of the things we're working on and we're also still working on the uh, leachate program uh, that was supposed to be done last year. It's now delayed again, again, because of the lack of um, employees from the ministry, everything is being delayed. Um, so that's probably not gonna happen again until next year. So that's sort of an update. I was elected chair again with uh, Andrew Plummer as vice chair. Anybody has any questions on landfill? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to community development, recreation, culture, community development officer report. And there is Katie. Hi, Katie. Hello. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, so in front of you, you have a report. Um, I will address a few items on the report. So we did send out our first e-newsletter for the month of February. We had 239 subscribers with an open rate of about 70%, um, almost 71%, which for reference, typically for e-newsletters, um, a successful campaign receives about 30 to 40% of an open rate. So I think this was a huge success. Um, and we sent out our March one at the beginning of the month and we'll continue to do so monthly. We had our service concierge workshop. Um, I, I'm just gonna briefly explain the service concierge. It was the last pillar of a project that started back in 2020 with um, the town of Petawawa and the city of Pembroke. And so this workshop is focused for supporting our business, our small business communities. Um, this workshop was focusing on merchandising and consumer behavior. It was the last pillar of the delivery model. Um, and it was a really great collaboration with the city of Pembroke and the town of Petawawa. And um, I definitely foresee further collaborations for workshops like this um, to pool our resources and to bring experts in on topics to help our small business community. Um, Mayor Bennett attended the grand opening uh, for Tail Wagers Canine Sports. Um, thank you, Mayor Bennett, for attending that and presenting a certificate to the owner. Um, we've officially launched an Instagram account. Um, it's still in the preliminary stages, and I do um, have additional strategies that I will be implementing on the account. Um, it just takes time to, you know, create the right graphics um, create, and then really implement the strategy. So it's still in the very early phases, but um, so far we're, we're gaining momentum, which is great. 
Um, and to bring to your attention as well that um, I'll be sitting on the board of directors in an ex officio position for the Upper Ottawa Valley Chamber of Commerce for a three year term. Um, they have completely revamped the chamber and are looking for representation from each of the municipalities, whether it's a staff or a municipal member or elected member. Um, so I'm looking forward to collaborating further and seeing them, how we can grow the chamber and further partner with um, the chamber on events and workshops and additional deliveries for our, our members. Um, the New Canadians TV a series officially launched at the end of February on Omni TV. This is a collaboration that was part of Red Funding with the County of Renfrew and the um, Local Immigration Partnership. So it received really great traction um, and I encourage everyone to access the segment once I, once I can share it further since it was live at the time on Omni. Um, additional activities for the month, month was the EDCO conference that I attended in Toronto, which was fantastic, um, as well as some upcoming ones is, is our winter scavenger hunt and then our mayor's breakfast, which is a collaboration with the Chamber of Commerce at the end of March. Any questions for Katie? Uh, Adeem, could you just maybe expand on the mayor's breakfast exactly what that's happening so council's aware and uh, anybody yeah. listening on that is aware? Absolutely. So I, I know it's a, a March activity, but um, forward thinking. So the mayor's breakfast is um, a, a breakfast that's in, we're inviting all the small businesses and our residents, whether they're from Lunch and Valley or outside of Lunch and Valley, to attend. Mayor Bennett uh, will be there to kind of just address how we're encouraging people to do business in Laurentian Valley to really grow with us and kind of the service offerings that we have. It's a great networking opportunity. Uh, there is a price for that. Um, it is segmented with um, chamber memberships and non-chamber memberships. Um, it will be held at Westwind's restaurant just due to its kind of you know proximity to the highway and easy accessibility. Um, and I encourage other elected members to be present as well. Um, as an opportunity to really network further and to kind of showcase what we can do as a team here in Lawrence Valley. Look forward to being there. And I think also we're going to give an update on some of the projects that Lawrence Valley is doing this year as well and roads, et cetera, and kind of break down the costs as Councillor Renna said in the past to kind of show people exactly where our money is going. Um, Katie, I will mention to you that when you click on, on the link, it does have the dates and times correct on the left hand side, but it still shows March 8th on the main invitation. Oh, um, okay. I will have that, uh, that updated. Thank you for, for addressing yeah. that. All righty. Any other questions for Katie? See you none. Thank you very much, Katie. Thank you. Okay. We'll move down to subcommittees, friends of the disabled. Uh, there is no update. I did reach out to Dan Callahan just to say um, I wondered how the funds came in for the polar dip. I know the actual event was canceled, but uh, they still kind of put it out there that they were taking donations. So I haven't got an update yet. So okay. maybe by next month. Shady enough, Brian. Uh, we had a meeting last night. Uh, the ice is pretty much toast at. Uh, Shady Nook, uh, some people went on and shoveled on their own and left piles of snow around, which then froze into piles and even though it was said keep off and closed. So that was kind of the end of that. But the so the hockey, they are going to, after March break, uh, try and rent some ice to have a kind of a wrap up session for the ice. Uh, they're interviewing uh, three folks for convener of soccer. So soccer's uh, a go and underway at this point and will be happening. And they're just getting that all organized at this point. Kojiko has been there. Um, still not complete, but they at least have showed up to try and get the internet working in the building as a whole at this Good. point. So that's shaking up. Alice yeah. Fraser. Right. Uh, we're trying to get a meeting together with all the people, with everybody's busy lives, uh, all the other people on the committee or volunteers on other different organizations. So trying to get a day to uh, get a wrap up of the Winter Carnival as well as start. Uh, I know we're trying to, they, Elizabeth wants to start working on Fall Flavors, get it going now um, and uh, get, get it started. I know Minor Ball is looking to get their registration started. Uh, in the next little while as, uh, while as well, but uh, that's basically, we haven't had a chance to get a meeting yet. That's fine. Fortunately, nothing with Keith, Pleasant View, 
Who's on Pleasant View? Pleasant View, yeah. um, right. still trying to get yeah. a hold of somebody. So there's still no no word on a committee structure. I think we need to send a letter. out. We've been asking for months. Let me all contact. The rumors I'll from Benita's yeah, younger contact. kids are taking over or whatever, but I'd like to see something going on before the spring. Get a committee together. Okay, uh, no Stafford, contact. Jennifer. Nothing to report. And the Four Seasons Game Trail. I know I've had a few hot chocolate nights and whatever, Mark. It's, I know you've been out for a while. I've been out for a while either, but I don't know if you have any updates on it. No, it's uh, it's been fairly steady. We've had a, a few events. I know I wasn't there, but the family day event was uh, well attended. And I think there was a couple hundred people uh, had entries in for the scavenger hunt, which is uh, which is a good number. Um, we've been closed for a few days, back open today. So we're hoping Mother Nature cooperates and we get most of March break in. I know we were chatting to one of the volunteers and we got two days of March break last year. So hopefully we can beat that and keep it going a little bit longer. I know we're usually by middle of March, we're, we're pretty much beat for the ice, but we're, we're holding on and, and keeping going. So. Good. Um, Keith isn't here tonight for the report. Council comments. Uh, seeing none, I, I do have a very short one and I won't get the clean Xbox out tonight, Charlene, because we are going to bring you back, but I just want to recognize that Charlene's last council meeting before her retirement. She's not happy at all, as you can see. <laughs> but uh, I, I do know that we're going to have a get together with with uh, close friends and, and colleagues and council and staff. So uh, we certainly will have you back. Um, then you can retire fully. Um, my only other question I had before we go into a closed session is, Charlene, have we received budgets from all the rec? Associations. I know we asked for them. Yeah. We mentioned Alice was or Alice Bridges was submitted. Okay. Yeah, I've received some uh, from them, but I think Nevada is coordinating that. Yes, yeah. I wasn't getting yeah. those. Like Nevada uh, okay, was receiving okay. them. Yep. And so, I don't. I honestly don't know how many have come in, but uh, we can. I'll get Nevada. Yeah. The okay. Good. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to. Um, Move into a close. Motion to a close. Motion to a close. Jennifer and Betty, please. Move by Councillor Gochi, second by Councillor King, that the Council Committee a meeting of March 7th, 2023, move into closed session at 6.25 p.m. Chaired by Mayor Bennett, according to Ontario Municipal Act two, uh, 2001, Section 239.2, Section 239.3, Section 239.3.1, in order to address the matter pertaining to uh, they're receiving advice that are subject to uh, solicitor client privilege, including communication necessary for that purpose. All in favor. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen.
So before we adjourn, Council, I, I did miss one comment on. Um, did that under council comments and that comment was uh we did receive an email and i think everybody got it that the snow at the gate at hazy blay had not been looked after uh and staff now has it cleaned off there's a yes. miscommunication between staff and and uh it was done the next morning once we made aware of it and it will be kept open for now on just or, i mean the snow will be removed from here on out Yes. Just want to clear that up. Shirley. Just closed. Cool. Motion, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Jennifer and Brian. Yep. I could spell. Moved by Councillor Gochi Keel, second by Council Hughley that the close whoops, that the Council and committee meeting of March 7th adjourn. Like, where is this? There we go. The council and committee meeting of March 7th, 2023 be adjourned at 6.44 p.m. All in favor. Carried. You need a holiday, Shirley. Yeah. <laughs>